Hi guys. It is Saturday, July 1st, 2023. And I'm here to do my June whip update. After I've spent an hour plus fighting with my computer and then waiting for it to update. And I was getting kind of frustrated. But we're finally here. And so I have some whips and some plans and a little bit of haul and some categories. And so um, we'll get started. And I'll show you what I stitched on. Um, June was, it was an okay month. It wasn't as good as May, but it was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, I had told you in May that trying to get to the end of leg six on road trip really helped, um, get my stitch count up and yeah, it really did. Um, cause in May I did 5,500 stitches and in June I've done 4,100 ish. Um, so yeah. I really, I really, uh, benefited from that push to finish leg six. But I've, I've gotten a good ways into leg seven. There's still, leg seven is kind of long. There's still a long way to go, but I'm, at, I'm right about where I should be. So I'm doing okay. So, um, I will show you what I worked on. And we will start with our old friend, the dogs. This is Retrievers by Janlin. Uh, well, it's by Sporting Masters, kitted by Janlin. And this is my oldest whip. This is from 1996. And... I have slowed way down on my progress on this piece. Um, Last year, and for some of this year, I've been doing, a, like, six, eight, a thousand stitches a month. Um, I think there's a couple months I've gotten up to eleven or twelve hundred stitches. But this month, the last couple of months, I've only done three hundred, and this is one of those months. Where I only did three hundred stitches. And they're all going in this, uh, this yellow dog up here. So he's starting to take shape and that's fun. I'm kind of, I'm making progress towards my goal of 5,000 stitches. I'm at about 3,600 stitches now. So I'm getting there, but um, progress has slowed way down on him. So I still I still put some stitches in every month, but it's not as, not as much as it used to be. I've just, you know, I've gotten focused on other things and I'll come back out. This is the very first thing I worked on at the beginning of the month because I was working on it at the end of last month, and I just finished up my stitches on it. And it got very little attention this month. I finished up my stitches from last month, and I never went back to it. This is Cabin Fever by Milho. And I only did... I only did a hundred stitches on it. All I did was, um, I did these trees right here and I started filling in this block right here. And that's, that's all I did on it. So, but it's going to come back out. I have a hundred more stitches to do on the project that, uh, I was working on last night and then, or this week, and then, uh, I'm going to pull this out. 
So, and I'm going to need, I'm going to need 350 stitches. So it's, it's going to get some attention. And this piece, 350 stitches goes a long way. Like, like it, it goes a long way. Like you can see it. It makes a big difference. I think, actually, I think when I started it in May, 350 stitches did the entire border. So, it, um, it goes a long way. This piece, um, this piece got some attention because I believe she was in one of my categories. This is Poppy from Mirabilia. Let's fix this. There we go. It's Poppy from Mirabilia, North Corbett. And she got 500 stitches. And I did all of, I had this, some of this right here. Then I did all of this dress. Um, all of that red and brown. So she's she's coming together. My goal on her this year is to finish her. So she's she's gonna need some she's gonna need some more attention. All of this where she's got this big hole in her back is her her wings. So She's going to need some more attention if I expect to finish her this year. It's kind of getting to that point in the year. I've been kind of ignoring Whipgo for the most part for most of the year. Like, I've been going on there every month when she draws the numbers, and I've been looking at what it is. And I have an idea of what's on my Whipco board, so, you know, I have an idea if I've met a goal or not. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to really pay attention. Like, I need to work on these things because, um, you know, the year is starting to wind down, which is insane. But I, I've kind of started paying a little more attention that I need to work on these things because I need to get these stitch counts in. And... I might, I don't like to do this because I do kind of feel like it's cheating, but, um, I might lower my goals on some of my squares because I don't, I have too many squares that the stitch counts are too high that I don't, I don't, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get all of those stitches in. So this is, um... This is a uh, project that was rescued from the bubble slash UFO pile earlier this year. This is Linus the Trick and the Treat by Prairie Moon. And I did not do hardly anything on this. I'm going to show it to you, but I only did 50 stitches on it for its birthday. And all I did was I did some stitches to fill in this, um, to fill in the inside outline of the oct octagon right there. That's all I did on it. So this fabric is um, flapper by Pictures Plus, thirty-two count flapper. I don't know if that fabric is available anymore. This project, this was my New Year New Start. This is Tetelestai by Quaint Rose Needle Arts on Etsy. And I put Six hundred and sixty-one stitches into this, and 
I have a problem, but I think it's fine. It's not fine, but it'll it'll be okay to fudge. Um. This is half. That'll be easier. So there it is. The fabric is Wisteria by uh, Live and Die LA, I think. And I hope you can see that. Yeah. Um. So my problem is that I made a mistake right there. And so when I got down here, I decided I'm going to go over here and just start on the other side. And that's how I realized that there was a mistake right here. Because when I went to start over here, this didn't match up. It didn't match up with the border. And so, um, I was like, well, would I make a mistake? The mistake was here. Now, when I started stitching, this was a Friday night when I started stitching on this. When I started stitching, I was like here. Or somewhere, yeah, somewhere right here. And when I found the mistake, I had already done all this. And I'm like, I'm not pulling all that out to fix this mistake up here. So, what I ended up doing was I ended up doing this and doing the cross. That's how I ended up putting the cross in. And then just um, placing this based on where the cross is. And it's not going to match up with the border, correct? And I think it's going to be like one stitch off center. It's going to be one stitch too far to the left or the right. And um, it's not going to quite match up with the border, okay? But I'm hoping that when it gets down to the bottom of the cross down there, that it's going to that it's going to meet up okay. And I'm not going to have like an extra column or something. But, uh, so there's, um, to tell us die 661 stitches. And I'm stitching it in, um, 3865, which I need to get a new skein. I, I finished the skein that I was on, so I need to find another skein. There's that. My goal for this one is also to finish it this year. This is a project that had not come out yet this year because one of the categories was something you haven't stitched on in 2023. And this is actually a project I haven't stitched on since I started it in 2011. And this is uh, Kimono by Donna Gallagher. And, um,. Actually, let me go on here. I'll show you. I'll show you where it was when I pulled it out. This is where it was when I pulled it out. That's all I did on it. It's it's about 200 stitches, a little more than 200 stitches maybe. It was enough um, at the end of 2020 when I was getting ready to do no new starts. It was um, it was at least 200 stitches. It was enough to get it into no new starts in 2021. So. I've put um, 400 stitches in it so far. So this is where it is. Almost all of those 400 stitches went into this pink. I did a little bit of this gray right here, but almost all of it went into that pink at the bottom. And it's, it's quick stitches because it's straight lines, but it's also boring. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do another 100 stitches today to get to my 500 stitches, and then I'm probably going to put it away, and I don't know if it's going to come back out this year or not. I don't know. But there's, there's my kimono. I saw this chart recently. Donna Gallagher has long passed away, and this chart is long out of print, and um, 
I recently came across this chart on Mercari. And I was like, oh look, there's my kimono chart. Also, I need a new working copy because um, the ink, I think I took this to Staples or something. I don't know how I made my working copy, but the ink has uh, transferred onto the vinyl on my project bag. So I think I'm going to need a new working copy. And I'm going to need to get in there and wipe off the vinyl. Get all that off there. All right. And the two big winners for the month. Well, Tetelestai was a big winner. This is my project that I divided into 12 parts. And the, the idea is to do one part a month so that you finish it by the end of the year. I am behind because we're in July. And I have finished January, February, March. I have not finished April, May, or June. So this is my by Dimensions Blue Collection Petites. And I did 750 stitches on this. And there it is. And I finished the February section, and the February section is this bottom part here. I did all these, I have something I can put behind this. Um, oops. oh, it's close to all the stuff doesn't fall out. Um. How about that? So, um, February is right here. And I did all these half stitches in here. There's some more half stitches in here for April. This is my goal this month. Well, it was my goal last month to, to finish April. But there was just so much other stitching to do. I did the branch. I did all these, these half stitches up here. But I think this is in June or May. This is, I think this is June. Um, yeah, I think this is June. And April is in between here. And, um, so my goal was to finish April, but I did this branch. I did all these half stitches. I finished out her sleeve. You can see I... I started on her neck, I did her hand, um, I don't remember what it, I did this branch down here and the cherry blossom flowers, and so there was just a lot of other stitching and I didn't quite get April done, but I'm going to work on April and May and a lot of June is half stitching in the background. The only full stitching there really is at the top here is there's some, there's a branch here, and there's some more flowers, and her, the rest of her neck, and her head, and her hair, and that's, that's really all the full stitching that's left for the top half, um, everything else is half stitch background, and then all the rest of the full stitching is in the, in the bottom here, so, um, it's, it's going to be a lot of half stitches. Which, of course, for challenges, you got to do twice as many. So, about 750 is um, 750 full stitches, which means I did buku amounts of half stitching. Um, so, there's my... I don't know... I was hoping I was going to be able to get her caught up in July... Um, July is the very top up here. This is, this is, this is May here where this branches, and, and then this is June, 
and then July is the entire top with all the background and, like, her bun and, like, the very top of her head. Um, so, and then the later half of the year is in the bottom here, so, uh, I was hoping to get her caught up in July, but there's still a lot of stitching, so I'm hoping to get some of the sections completed in April, and we'll see, so, um, there she is. She looks pretty. I'm making progress on her. And the big winner for the men. And this is... This is going to be a finish this week. I need to do my 100 stitches on kimono. And I need... 350 stitches on Cabin Fever, which I might be able to finish tomorrow. But then, uh, after that, this is going to come out until it's a finish. And this is Hope Song by Heartstring Samplery. This was an exclusive by the uh, Homespun Needlework Group last year. And, um, I believe it's going to be released at market next year. I did 1,352 stitches on this this month. Um, last month, the border... Ugh. Okay. Let's see if this works better. Last month... The board, I had the W and the I, and I think I was, I think I was right here on the border. And so I've worked the border all the way around up here, all the way up. And I did the bird sings, I finished the word winter and I did bird sings. And so all that's left is this little bit of the wreath. I think there's there's this flower, the rest of this flower, and there's two more flowers to finish the wreath. And then the rest of the wording, my heart remembers hope when the... And I think it's like six or seven hundred stitches. Maybe it's eight hundred. But it's not, it's not very much left. Um, so this is going to be a finish this week. Maybe by next weekend. I have to work Monday. But Tuesday's a holiday, so I'll have an extra day to get some stitches in, and uh, we will make this into a finish sooner rather than later. So I could really use a finish. I've been saying this for several videos now. I haven't finished anything since February, I think. And it would be really nice to have a finish. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so that's what I stitched on. 4,100 and some change stitches. Um, so. And a lot of different projects. I worked on a lot of things this month. For categories. And also some of the prompts on Road Trip have specific, uh, specific things that they ask for. And that's why I'm working on. That's why I pull, uh, I'm working on Cabin Fever, and that's one of the reasons why I pulled out Kimono, is because they meet the prompt for road trip. So, plans for the month, for July. We have categories. The July categories were called... And I, I've kind of figured this out. Um, the first category is flora and fauna, which is plants or animals. And I think I'm going to use Tetelestai for that. I wasn't sure what I was going to use, but I think I'm going to use Tetelestai because I'm trying to get it finished. You know, I want to finish it, so it needs some it needs some attention. For medium, I'm going to use my. 
The next category is full coverage. Um, and I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think more likely than not, um, I'm going to use Silver Moon Tea by Mirabilia. Um, I did 200 stitches on her last month, and I need to get her to 500, so I'll probably put 300 stitches in her and get her to 500. My oldest whip is the dogs, so he'll, they'll get some more attention. And the pattern from 22 or 23 is a hope song, and that'll be a finish. So, there's my categories. Um, I'm still working on road trip, trying to finish the campground. Um, I'm hoping to finish that. And hopefully tomorrow, I still need 450 stitches. So, if I get my butt in gear, maybe I'll be able to finish it tomorrow or Monday. Um, July is my birthday month and I always take vacation around my birthday and I'm taking two weeks I'm not really going anywhere there's one day I'm going to go to San Diego and see some friends um, I think I'm going to end up spending a day at the DMV that'll be fun um, but I'm hoping to get a lot of stitching done. I'm hoping to make some really good progress on the road trip. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to it's gonna be a good stitching month. Because I have a bunch of time off work. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do besides the categories. Some of it's probably going to be driven by road trip. Because I know I'm going to be getting into a section. Where a lot of the shops have stitch on something with. So probably some of it's going to be driven by that. Um, I don't know. I guess we will find out. Um, I don't know about a birthday start. I think I talked about this last month, too. Um, I have some ideas. I don't know. Um, I have some possibilities. I'm not sure that I'm going to do it. So, I guess we will find out what happens. Um, my birthday buddy, Miss Alma, I was hoping she would, <laughs> I was hoping she would inspire me, but she's not doing a birthday start either. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. In my head... I keep, I keep coming across all these projects, and I keep going, oh, that would be fun to start. Oh, that would be fun to start. Oh, I should get to stitching that. Oh, I should... But then when it comes to actually... The idea of, like, actually starting it and adding a project, I'm like, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, stay tuned. We'll find out what happens. Um, do I have anything else for plans? I don't think so. I don't, I don't have any other plans that I can uh, think of at the moment. My whip go for July is, um, oh, I knew what it was. Oh, one of them is FFO Hope Song, and one of them is, oh, I think the other one is a Chatelaine. The Whip Google for Chatelaine is 3,000 stitches, and I have 500, and this is why I'm thinking maybe I'm going to lower the goals, because I have a 3,000 stitch goal for Chatelaine and for Greta. And for, um, what's the other piece that has a 3,000 stitch goal? For Illuminated Manuscript has a 3,000 stitch goal, and I don't know that I'm going to make that on any of those. 
so we might adjust that goal. Um, Savannah has a 5,000 stitch goal, and I need to get moving on her, too, because she's only got about 13, 1,400 stitches in her. So I've got a lot of projects that have big goals and need a lot of stitches. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I might, I might adjust some of those goals. So, Hall, I bought a, a few things. There was a lot of the month where I was like, I'm not trying to buy anything. You know, I don't want to spend the money. I don't need anything. In fact, last night I was just thinking, I had to go through this cabinet right here. This cabinet right there has all my stuff. Well, it has a lot of my stash in it. There's also some stash over here. But um, I was thinking, I really should go through there and weed out a lot of that stuff. That I'm like, I'm not going to stitch this. Um, I really should do that. <laughs> I could probably clear a lot of space because I think there's I think there's a lot of stuff in there that I'm not gonna stitch. Um, so I've been like I don't need to buy anything, but towards the later part of the month I found a couple things I'm like that I I need pleased. So the first thing that I got this goes to I think this goes here. Okay, is I got a bag from Vic. What else did I get from Vic? Oh, okay. I was like, there's something in the bag. What did I get? Alright, I know what it is. So, I got a... I got a Mickey Mouse bag. This is from Stitch and Button. And the inside is just a... Just a brown, brown and black design. Because you'll need, no, I need more bags. I can need a hole in the head. But it's Mickey Mouse. Like, how can you resist Mickey Mouse? And then the other thing is that Vic put a new product in her shop. Um, and it's a needle puller. And what it is, is it's this little plastic tube. And so if you're trying to run your needle under your stitches and it gets stuck and you can't quite pull it out, you put, you know, you slide the tube over it and you pinch down on it and it gives you, it gives you a little more purchase. It gives you something to hold on to to be able to pull out your needle. Um, so that's what that is. And she puts beads and she puts a little charm on it. And I got, I got the little koala charm because mm -hmm. I don't remember if I talked about this on here. So I have a patio back here behind me. I have a patio. And it was overgrown, and I was kind of fighting with management about it. But one of the problems, and one of the reasons why management was kind of on my case about it is because there were raccoons getting back there. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm the only one that has, that I'm the only one that they were getting into, or I don't know. But they were on my case because they don't want raccoons nesting back there. They don't want, you know, them getting into the crawl space and whatever. Um, so... Uh, or other other animals to nest back there and whatever. So I was telling my friends on Zoom, talking to my friends on Zoom about it one night, and I accidentally said koalas in, in, instead of raccoons. And because you know we have koalas here in Los Angeles, of course. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> so it's kind of become a joke that Laurel has raccoons on her or, uh, koalas on her patio. Because, you know, I'm also growing eucalyptus back there. So, um, so I got the, I got the little koala charm. If somebody says, what did you learn on Floss Tube? You can say, I learned that they have koalas in Los Angeles. <laughs> Alright, so... Another thing that I got, and I'm kind of glad that I got it for a cheap price because I don't like as many things in it as I thought that I might. I mean, I like some, I like, I like some things in it, but I don't know that there's a whole lot in here that I'm going to stitch. But um, I got the Oriental Odyssey book from Joan Elliott. It has some pretty things in it. 
Um, I don't know how many of them I'm going to stitch. I got that. And this, this is a contender for a birthday start. I saw this and I'm like, and actually it's kind of not my usual style, but I just thought it was so cute and so funny. Um, I saw it on stash load and I was like, this, this would be a good birthday start. It's a small project. I can finish it quickly. Um, I actually have not looked at the chart. The post office kind of mangled the chart. Okay, it's stitched in. It's stitched in DMC. So, this is called Lady Kathleen Kitty Hello Goodbye by Summerhouse Stitchworks, and it's a needle book. And I just thought it was so cute that the front is the front of the cat and the back is the back of the cat. <laughs> I just thought it was so cute. And um. So I got that and maybe that'll be my birthday start. It's small. This bit up here, this wrinkled bit up here, I think is the fault of the post office. They like folded the envelope in half to put it in my mailbox. And then I also got another project bag because you know I need another one of those like we discussed um last month I showed the one with the pink and white flowers I think they're daisies um or cone flowers I'm not sure what they are but I got I got another bag from the same seller just because it's so pretty and so this is bluebirds and the inside is feathers And I wasn't sure what project I'm going to put in here, but I have a project. It's um, Delft Blue uh, Hornbook by um, Ellen Chester that I have in, like in a winter Christmas cardinal bag, and I think I'm going to move it to this bag. So, there's my project bag. These are about the same size as Garan's bag. I think they're an inch taller than the Garan bag, but they're they're the same, about the same size and the same style as um, the Garan bags. So, story time. I had ordered three things, right? I got the bag, I got the kitty cat chart, and I got the Joan Elliott book. So I'm like, okay, I ordered three things, and when I went to my informed delivery, there were three packages on there. I'm like, okay, well, this makes sense. I ordered three things, and I have three packages. Well, two of the packages were delivered on Wednesday. The, the project bag and the Joan Elliott book. And on Thursday, I had kind of forgotten about the third package. And then in the evening, I looked, I'm like, oh, it was delivered today. I think it told me it wasn't going to be delivered until the 30th, so I wasn't really paying that much attention to it on Thursday. But I happened to look at it Thursday night, and it had been delivered on Thursday, but I didn't go out there to get it. So last night, I thought, let me go out there and get this. And so I went out there, and there's this little box in my mailbox, which... Let me make sure not to show you my address here, but there's this little box sitting in the bottom of my mailbox, and I'm like, I didn't order anything that would come in a box. Like, where did this come from? Did somebody send me something? And I looked at the, I looked at the return address, and it was a company, but it was one that I didn't recognize. So I'm like, I don't think I ordered anything from them, but you know, sometimes when you buy off stash and load, the the seller has like a business name and I thought well maybe it's one of them but I still don't know what I ordered that would have come in a, in a box instead of an envelope so so this was in the bottom of the mailbox and the kitty cat chart was kind of folded in half and tucked behind it and so I came in the house and I'm like what is this like did somebody send me something 
because that happens once in a while, but it doesn't happen a lot. And, um, so I opened it up, and there was a bunch of pink tissue paper in it. But somebody did send me something. It was Vic at Stitch and Button, who had the, who had the, the vendor put a very nice note in there. And it's a early birthday present. Um, but what she sent me was, she sent me a floss card that says Laurel's Lovelies on it. And it's got little flowers on it. I'm like, it's so pretty. And then it's got, I guess it's got 20 holes. I think it's so pretty. And, you know, it's hard to find personalized stuff with any Laurel on it. it they always have Laura and Lauren, but it's difficult to find Laura, Laurel unless you special order it. So, she sent me that. And then she sent me a, a floss ring with some floss thread tags on it. Um, and these are... These are all, like, religious Bible... Uh, ones. So there's the one with the with Jesus, and um, there's different scriptures and different. There's one that says Jesus loves you and different, you know, scriptures and religious things and and it has the little beads and there's an angel charm on the bottom and they're so pretty and they're wood and. So she sent me both of those, and they're very pretty, and I love them. And thank you, Vic. Um, it was a it was a lovely surprise. So I will enjoy those. And it was fun to get the surprise in the mail. So. Um, Vic doesn't want people to know it, but she really is very sweet. <laughs> I'm giving her, her, away her secret, but she is really very sweet. Um, and she's going to yell at me for telling y'all that, but she is. Um, I think that's about all I have. Um, as far as stitching goes... One of the things not stitching related that I've been working on, and I don't know if I've talked about this on here before, maybe I have, I don't know, is that my great-grandfather was adopted. And my grandmother had wanted to find out who his birth parents were. My grandparents were both into genealogy. And um, one of the things my grandmother had tried to do was to find out who his birth parents were. And he was born in Ithaca, New York. And she had traveled, this is back in the 80s or early 90s, that she had traveled to Ithaca and she had gone to the recorder's office and they said at this time, you know, you needed to have a judge's signature to get adoption records released. And they said, well, go to the courthouse tomorrow and get the judge's signature and come back and we'll give you the records. Well, my grandmother was traveling with a friend and the friend did not want to pay for another night in the hotel. And insisted on going home to Ohio. They lived in Ohio. So, my grandmother never did get the records. So, I've kind of taken up the mantle here. I've been trying to, you know, see if I can find out who my great grandfather's birth parents were. And so, um, the state of New York, as in 2019, the state of New York changed the law where an adoptee or their direct descendants can get adoption records without a judge's signature. And so I tried that. I may have talked about this part on here, where I had to provide proof that I am, a, that I am his great-granddaughter, and, you know, I had to prove that my grandmother was his daughter and that she got married and had my mom, and my mom got married and had me, and I had to get all these documents, and, and they said, well, we don't have that record. Great. So, um, I was told 
at the city of Ithaca. But, you know, there's a city of Ithaca, and there's also a town of Ithaca. Why? I don't know. But there is. And one of them, and I kind of think it might be the town, I understand that one of them did not turn their adoption records over to the state, that one of them kept their own adoption records and their own uh, vital statistics, vital records. And so I may be able to get the records from them. I haven't made the request yet. I'm going to have to go back and find all my paperwork and put it all together again. I haven't done that yet. So, another thing that I was, another thing that I've been kind of looking at, and I haven't done it yet, um, is DNA. Because, of course, Ancestry does DNA, and you can get distant cousin matches, and then you can kind of trace back, and, you know, and so I'm like... I should do that, and I should have my mom and my uncle each do one, and then we'll get the cousin matches. My mom and my uncle, of course, are a generation closer to my great-grandfather than I am, and they had a sale for Father's Day, and I missed it on the DNA test, but, so I'm like, I'm gonna have to wait for another sale, but then I was thinking, my mom and my uncle have a cousin, well, they have three cousins that, um, their parents and my grandparents were siblings. My grandfather's sister was married to my grandmother's brother. So we have the same lineage on both sides. Um, well, you know, my, my mom and my uncle and their three cousins, they have the same lineage on both sides because they're, you know, both of their parents are siblings. So I contacted him because I'm like, I think my, I think my uncle has told me that the cousin took a DNA test. And so I contacted the cousin yesterday and I was like, Hey, did you take a DNA test? And he says, yeah. And he says, what do you need? And so I told him and he's, I didn't know this, that you have to have a separate subscription for DNA than just the ancestry genealogy subscription. And he says, well, I don't have an active subscription, but when they have the free trial or sometimes he said they email him hints and they email him stuff. Um, next time he gets one of those, he'll go in there and and send me the matches. So I'm going to, hopefully that'll be soon. (laughs) So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, uh, maybe I'll be able to get it through his matches because he and my mom have the same, you know, same lineage on both sides, um, I'm gonna try to, uh, see if I can figure it out. Hopefully some of those cousins have public family trees. Um, and the other thing, and maybe one of you can help, or maybe one of you knows somebody who can help, I was told that adoption records, of course, are not public, but if you go to the State Library in Albany, New York, um, and look at the the financial reports of the city, or the county, um, those children were wards of the state, and as wards of the state, they would be listed in the county financial reports because the county was spending money on them. And that you can't do it online, you can't ask for it to be sent to you. You have to be there in person at the library to get the information. And, um, but you can go and get those financial reports and the children would be there along with prisoners and other, you know, other people that were considered wards of the county. Um, and... I, of course, live in Los Angeles. I do not live in Albany. (laughs) So if any of you live in Albany or live, you know, close to Albany and would be willing to perhaps do me a not small favor, um, I would appreciate that. Um, but, but, uh, 
Yeah, so that's that's something else that I've been working on besides stitching is is trying to uh, do this genealogy work and see if I can find out who my who my great grandfather's birth family is. I'm told. I don't know if this is true. This is kind of hearsay based on my grandmother's memory from you know now it's been 85 years um but at the time it was probably like 60 years ago um that they were linked to a prominent family in New York and um or in that section in New York the Ogden family and William Butler Ogden was the first mayor of Chicago but his family was also prominent in Elmira, New York and Chemung County, New York and I'm told that the birth parents I don't know if she was in the Ogden family or in his his widow's family or if she was somebody in that circle like she was a maid or she was somebody in their circle that they helped her they helped her to maybe conceal her pregnancy and, and get rid of the baby. Um, I don't know if it was, you know, I don't know who she was. I don't know if she was in their family or if she was just somebody that they helped to facilitate this adoption. I also don't know if it was a legal adoption or if it was they just sort of passed the baby along. <laughs> so I'm trying to work on all that, and that's that's something else that I've been working on. So... Um, that's all I have for this month. Um, hopefully next month, by the end of, uh, July, I'm hoping, and I think the expectation is, um, from admin, from Carla, by the end of July, I think they're hoping to be wrapping up, like, seven. Um, at the end of July, at the beginning of August, I, th I think they're hoping to be wrapping up, like, seven. So... I'm hoping to be right, <laughs> right, getting close to the end of like seven by the time the month ends, by the time I see you next month. Um, so that's all for me, and I will see you all next time. Happy stitching.